Black Op Radio presents 50 Reasons for 50 Years. Why the Warren Commission may be the greatest fraud perpetrated on the American public. Now your host, Len Osanek. From being confronted by an armed policeman, Marion Baker, to the arrest at the Texas Theater, to the hours of interrogation, those who had direct contact with Lee Oswald stated he appeared calm, cool, and collected. In contrast, the official story portrays Oswald as nervous and indecisive as he made his escape. It's worthwhile taking a closer look at the events following the assassination of John F. Kennedy. After leaving the school book depository, Oswald walks seven blocks and boards a city bus bound for the Oak Cliff neighborhood of Dallas. Knocked on the door of the bus and I opened the door and, and a man got on the bus. The bus was soon stuck in traffic and Oswald got off. And, and got him a transfer and, and got off. He walks three blocks south, finds a taxi and directs it to Oak Cliff. Got in, said he wanted to go 500 block north Beckley. So I come on the way we're going now and turn right on this signal light. Now he lived uh, right here in this block. Right here, he? in the same block, right here. Which from the house right there? That house right there. But he didn't say anything about getting out. No, sir, and he wasn't looking at it as we passed. He just said, this will do fine. I waited until I passed the last car and pulled over to the curb. Opened the door and got out, walked around in front of the cab and crossed the street, and that's the last I saw him. I went on about my business. Oswald would double back four blocks to his rooming house. So when I got the telephone call about the president being killed, I walked over here and turned the television on, and the door opened, and he come in in a hurry. It must have been after one o'clock. He come in, and he wasn't running, he was just in a fast walk. I just said, are you sure in a hurry? And he didn't answer me, he didn't say that. While Oswald was in his room, Robert sees a Dallas police squad car with two uniformed officers stop in front of the rooming house and honk its horn twice. When he went out, he went out walking fast the same way, and I was still listening there them bound broadcasting about President Kennedy. And went out and to the bus stop, and that's the last I saw of it. So, Rather than erratic and panic-stricken, it appears from the moment Oswald left the school book depository, he was always heading by bus or by cab to his North Beckley Street address in Oak Cliff. Doubling back to his rooming house can be recognized as a technique used by intelligence operatives to reveal whether they are being followed. From his rooming house, Oswald was always heading to the Texas Theater. What is in dispute is how and at what time he got there. Witnesses at the Texas Theater said that Oswald was inside the theater by 1.10. The official story maintains that Oswald, acting strangely, walked the streets of Oak Cliff at a brisk pace. Seen by nobody, and apparently with no known destination, is stopped by a policeman who has presumably noticed his odd behavior. He shoots the policeman four times, then flees behind, leaving a trail of incriminating evidence. He then enters the Texas Theater without paying. So what to believe? Again, it's worthwhile taking a closer look. Researcher John Armstrong recounts the activities of Dallas policeman J.D. Tippett. Shortly after the assassination, when Oswald's on the bus, Tippett is parked at the Gloco station, right across the street from where the bus is supposed to stop and turn left onto Lancaster Street. Oswald's supposed to get off that bus and walk about three blocks to his apartment at 1026 Beckley. Tippett's sitting at the Gloco station. The bus comes, no Oswald, the bus turns left. The people in the gas station say that Tippett sped out of there and went in the same direction as the bus. My belief is that Tippett was following this bus to see if Oswald was gonna get off the bus. He didn't. The next time we see Tippett is over at the Top 10 record store making a phone call just a few minutes after 1 o'clock. Louis Cortinas and those people in the record store say he came in, he made a call, apparently nobody answered, he hung up the phone, ran out of his car, and headed across Jefferson Boulevard. And the next time we see Tippett is when he stops Oswald 
and we know what happened. Three shots, and he walks around and shoots Tippett in the head, make sure he's dead. Then this person goes down the street and he's seen by that car salesman, and he said he was wearing a white Eisenhower type jacket and a white t-shirt behind the Texco station, drops his jacket underneath that 1954 Oldsmobile. Then he goes back into the alley and he makes his way down the street. What's he wearing at this point? A white t-shirt. They might have the assassin out there. They're looking for a white male, 35, about 5'8 in height. He got a white shirt. They are putting an unusually great number of policemen out in that area. Right after President was shot, they broadcast a description on the radio of this man, 5'8", 5'9", 150 pounds. On the radio, they had a bulletin that an officer had been shot here in Oak Cliff. And he walked in, he matched the description. Looked scared. He walked right into the right-hand side of the lobby there, just a few feet from the door. And Were there a lot of police cars? In yeah, the there was uh, a lot of police cars. When he went out the lobby for the theater, I walked out to the sidewalk and watched him go in. I walked up to the theater and asked Miss Postal there, the cashier, if she had sold a ticket to this man wearing a brown sports shirt, you know, his description. But a brown sports shirt was never part of the description. And shoe store manager Johnny Brewer was the only person to describe the man associated with the tippet slang as wearing one. Unlike everyone else who's had any contact or sighting of Oswald that day, Brewer and others located near or at the Texas Theater were never officially interviewed or asked to give a full statement until December 6th, after the FBI report on the assassination had been written and most of the elements of the official story already established. The anomalies associated with the Tippett slang are well known. Reports of an automatic weapon rather than a revolver, no initials on the shell casings, no fingerprints on the car, a jacket a size too big, a wallet left on the scene with ID for Oswald and Heidel. And add to that something which is not discussed very often. The Dallas police stormed the Texas theater looking for a suspect in a white shirt believed to be in the balcony. Moments later, they emerged with an arrested man wearing a brown shirt who was seated on the main floor. Stay tuned for the next installment as we expose week after week 50 lies the Warren Commission would like you to believe.